Welcome to the Growing in Love for Life podcast, where it's all about saving and strengthening your marriage and creating the relationship you really deserve and want to have. And now, from growinginloveforlife.com, relationship and marriage coach and best-selling author, your host, Liam Naden. Well, hi there and welcome to episode one of the Growing in Love for Life podcast. And it's Liam Naden here, and I'm delighted to be with you. This is the very first episode of our brand new podcast, and it's something I've been thinking about doing for quite a while, but I'm absolutely thrilled that we've finally got it off the ground, and we're going to be able to share with you some of the information that I hope is really going to make a difference to your marriage. And as the title of the podcast says, Growing in Love for Life, this is about saving and strengthening your marriage. So I've really created this podcast with the same mission I have for what, whatever else I do with Growing in Love for Life, which is to help people who are really struggling in their marriage, who are struggling in their relationship. And it's about giving you real solutions, real ideas and concrete things that you can do right away that's going to make a positive difference. And you know, I see people in real pain with their relationships. And let's face it, most people, you know, it seems to be somehow the way, way marriages are in our modern society, most people have got problems. And a lot of people have got really big problems. So really, if you've got big problems, this podcast is for you. And my mission is to really help you because I've been there myself, I know what it's like, and I've developed some tools and ideas that I think really could make a difference. So that's what this podcast is about. Now this first episode is going to be a little bit different to the subsequent episodes because, of course, this is our our introduction. So in this one, I want to give you a bit more background about who who I am and my story and why I'm here right now sharing this information and really the angle that I'm coming from as well in terms of this whole area of marriage and relationships and, and how do we take them from a place that really originally we had so much hope and anticipation and joy and passion, and then it becomes a place of almost living hell for many people. So how do we get get it back from that living hell to where it was originally and to where really we want it to be, which is a place of joy and fulfillment? So just to tell you a little bit about me and my background and how I've come to put all this together, well, I'd like to be able to say to you that I've been married to my current wife for 45 years and we've never had an argument and we've got the most wonderfully passionate, exciting relationship. Now I'd like to be able to say to you that but in truth that's not the case at all. In fact, I, I've really come from the opposite angle where, or the opposite background. I actually started off, just to tell you a little bit about um, how I've come to this, I started off my life after school, I, I actually went to university and studied music. I was a classical musician. I studied the organ and harpsichord, would you believe? <clears throat> and after that, um, I really I really loved music. I was very passionate about it. But after that, after I finished my degree, I decided to move away from music into my own businesses. And I have had many businesses over the years. Um, I started off in the wine business, actually, which is a, another one of my passions. But anyway, but as the years went by and I had a number of businesses, what I found was I was fascinated with my own success without trying to sound arrogant. But I was very successful in in a number of my businesses. And I started to work out, try to, I started to want to find out why I was being successful. And that got me very interested in the whole area of personal development and human performance and even psychology. Because I was trying to figure out what it is that makes some people succeed in an area and other people, in fact, unfortunately, the majority, uh, fail in a particular area. So what is it that distinguishes the successful people in any area? And I found it a lot of very interesting things and it really helped me in my business life. And I also, it helped me in my health. I had a, some a couple of real turnarounds in my health became a lot healthier by by learning some more information about peak performance and health. 
But the interesting, interesting thing was, I remember not so long ago, waking up <clears throat> in the morning, and I was lying where I'd spent the night on the couch in my mother's living room. Now, I was not a young guy. I was, I was not a teenager. This is me in my mid-40s. And I just ended my second marriage, and it ended up in complete disaster. And I'd lost absolutely everything. And I mean everything. I mean my friends, my businesses, obviously, you know, the homes that I owned. And I, I, I was financially very successful up until, to the, up until this point. Uh, my homes, absolutely everything. And I ended up with one old car and a few clothes. And that was literally it. No income, nothing. In fact, I was fighting bankruptcy. And I, anyway, I got to this point of losing everything at, at the end of a, of a very messy or going through a very messy uh, marriage breakup, and I thought, a couple. well, a couple of things occurred to me, actually. The first thing I realised <clears throat> was that the, the most important thing by far in my life that impacted the quality of my life more than anything else was the quality of the relationship I was in. And... Obviously, in my situation then, it was that it had created a very big negative effect. But I realized that, and I thought about it, and I realized that that is true. And I'm sure you would agree that's the case for you as well. That the quality of your relationship or your marriage has more of an impact on anything else than anything else in your life on the quality of your life. And the second thing I realized was, you know, I'd had all the success in all these other areas, financially, business, health, but I had completely failed to master the area of relationships. And because of that, that was, the, that was why I was in the mess I was in. So at that point, I thought, right, now if relationships are so important, and I realize they are, then my one, number one priority is to figure out this relationship stuff. And with all my knowledge from personal development, psychology, human performance, I felt myself at a great advantage because I went out from there on and I thought, and I said to myself, I'm going to master this area of my life and I'm going to see how these areas of mastering a particular area of your life can apply to relationships. So I really started to focus in on this and I did a couple of very interesting things. The first thing I did was I obviously I read a lot of books, I did, did some courses and I started to follow experts and people who seem to really know about relationships and how to make them work and what they're all about. But the second thing I did was I started to observe people who are in relationships or marriages. And they weren't necessarily people I knew. In fact, most of them weren't because remember by this stage I'd, I'd lost nearly all my friends as well. So, I, But I started to observe couples in particular, people in marriages and what I was trying to figure out by looking at these couples was what makes a marriage work? What makes it really work? And I saw there were essentially two types of people in a marriage. Well, there are actually three types, but the two main types were, uh, firstly, seemed to be the majority. And they were the people who'd been together for quite a while, and their marriage was okay. But obviously the intensity had waned had declined. They weren't, they weren't particularly passionate with each other. They were sort of okay around each other, but there wasn't the, the joy and the intimacy that there probably was early on in their marriage. But things were, you know, okay, but there were no, didn't seem to be any particular joyful, joyful sparks flying. And that was my observation of most people who've been in a marriage or in a relationship for a reasonable length of time, say a decade or more, or actually even less when you think about it. But then I saw there was another very interesting group of people who were in a marriage. Now this was a much smaller group, but these were people who actually, even though they'd been together for quite a long time, they were still crazy about each other. You know, they had very physical relationships, they laughed together, they had a lot of fun, they absolutely adored and worshipped each other. They hang out together, they were friends, they were best friends. And although that was a much smaller group, I was particularly fascinated with that because I thought, you know, if there are some people who can create an amazing relationship and one that keeps getting better with time, that doesn't go with the masses that 
you know, things decline with time, if they can actually make it keep getting better, then there's got to be something I can learn from that. There's got to be things that they are doing, and what I've also discovered, things that they are thinking, that's going to be able to, that, that's the, the reason why they've created the relationship the way they have. So I really started to look at that, and by applying some, um, some personal development and performance and psychology techniques and, and ideas, I started to see some patterns here. And it was absolutely fascinating because I could start to see what these people were doing that made things work the way they did. So the very first thing I did with that information was I applied it to myself and I was very and I was thrilled to attract into my life an amazing woman who's still my partner today and things literally are still getting better and better with time between us, which is great. And the second thing I, I did as well was I started to share some of this information with other people because I was so excited by it that it actually really did work. And I was fascinated to see that in my from my perception very few people had really taken this whole area of what we've learned about psychology in the last few years and the way people think and the way people behave and really applied it in a in a very modern way, if you like, to relationships. You know what I've been part of in, when I'd had all my sorts of my troubles with my relationships, the 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 system, if you like, that I've been a part of, is what really most people are part of when they when they try and solve the problems in their relationships, which are traditional counselling. And the problem with traditional counselling, and I know there's some wonderful counsellors out there, you know, and I'm not saying I'm any better than they are, but my approach is definitely different, and I'll explain a little bit more in a second why. But the problem is when the traditional counselling, what it actually does is it focuses on the symptoms of problems in relationships, which are rather than the actual cause. And I just found when I was trying to put my relationships together and, and get over all the problems, it, it, re it really was all about focusing on the problems and how do you fix the problems. But, but what I've really discovered is that problems, as I just mentioned, they're the symptoms of what's going on. But what you've got to get, what you've got to do is get in and, and fix the real cause if you really want to solve things. And when you do that, the problems actually just seem to disappear of themselves. And I'll give you a good analogy here um, as to how my approach really, uh, what my approach really is. Um, my partner, when we, when, soon after we got together, I discovered that she had all of these different niggly pains on her body. Now, none of them, none of them were life-threatening, but they were all rather strange, and they were very painful for her. You know, for instance, she had a, a painful wrist, and she had a sore foot, just one, one spot on her foot that gave her a lot of pain. And she had a, a, a neck that was a bit, that used to come out of alignment quite frequently, and that caused her a lot of pain. And then she had a bit of lower back pain from time to time. Now, she was a very healthy person. She still is very active. And she was, she'd tried lots of things. She'd tried, you know, the doctor, of course, um, and painkillers and that sort of thing. And she'd tried uh, the chiropractors, <clears throat> acupuncture. You know, she went to yoga quite frequently. Um, she was very active. She tried all these things, and none of them had really worked. And some of them provided a little bit of temporary relief. But they didn't really work. And I put her on to somebody in San Diego called Peter Goscu. And this isn't an advertisement for Peter Goscu, but he is quite an amazing man. And what he is, he's a structural anatomist. And what he actually does, instead of looking at all of your individual symptoms, so instead of looking at a pain in your wrist and saying, right, well, what can we do about your wrist? What he does is he says that any pain that you have in your body is the result of the whole alignment of your body not being correct. So if there's something about the structure of your body that's not right, it comes out as a symptom, as a pain in a particular part of your body. And I remember the consultation my partner did with one of his trainers, and you know she was starting to describe where her pains were, and I've got a pain here, and this is sore. And he said, okay, that's fine, and I, you know, let me just stop you there. I don't want to downplay or negate the severity of your symptoms, but what I want to do is I just want to look at your alignment. I want to look at the structure of your body and see where it's out of alignment. And we, if we can fix that, 
then you'll find the symptoms are going to disappear. And that's exactly what happened. And um, it, it was quite amazing. So applying that to what I do, I, I guess I see myself as a bit of a relationship structural anatomist, if you like. I'm really more concerned with what is the, what's the structure of a relationship all about? How do you really make that work on a fundamental level? And if you can see where things are going wrong in terms of, for instance, communication or the way people are thinking or the way they're viewing the relationship, which is going to change and affect the behavior, if you can start to get it hone in on those things and correct those things at a really deep level, all of the symptoms, and the symptoms are things like people arguing, lack of intimacy, um, people just saying they've fallen out of love with each other or they're not attracted to each other anymore, or they're having an affair, or they've even got to the point of le having left or leaving. All of those are symptoms. So if you can deal with the inner structure of the relationship and how it's really working and where it's not working, then those symptoms are actually going to disappear of their own accord. And I found that this approach w works really well. And I've, I use it in my personal coaching with, with people. And it's, it helps a lot of people, which is, which is great. It's not about sitting down and talking about individual problems and trying to solve those problems. It's about dealing with the structure of the relationship and letting the problems solve themselves. So, as I say, I started to work with all of this and started to share it with other people. And that's really where, where I, why I'm here today, is I want to share it with more people. And this podcast seems to me to be an ideal vehicle to get the message out there that in the, you know, in the 21st century, we need new tools. We've got a new society. Relationships, they need a new way of dealing with the way society is and the pressures and the way it is. And the old tools aren't going to, they're simply not going to work. The old approach of just fighting fires and, and trying to solve problems is only really going to create more problems. Things are far too complex. So I'm not, obviously I don't know how you got here. Maybe you got here through my website, which is uh, growinginloveforlife.com. Maybe you read one of my books. I have a, a book on Kint. I've written a few books now because I love to write and I've got some, uh, I love to share these ideas in my books as well. And I have one on Kindle called The Sexless Marriage Cure. And if you get a chance, pick that up because it's not just about sexless marriage, it's about how do you rebuild the intimacy and passion into a relationship on a, on a deep and fundamental level. So that's a little bit about me. Now, moving on to the podcasts itself, as I said at the beginning, this one's going to be a little bit different because I'm giving you some background to me and to what we're going to be sharing and doing together. But in future episodes, roughly we're going to stick to probably about a 30-minute um, length, 30 minutes in length, might be a bit more because sometimes I'm going to bring in some guests as well to give a different perspective on some of the things we're going to cover and talk about. And in each of these episodes I'd really like to hone in on just one or two topics and to give you something really concrete to go away with because my goal for you is if I can give you one idea that you can apply that, just a simple idea that you can apply easily and quickly to your marriage and see a positive difference, then that's going to be worthwhile. Because one of the things, obviously, that I find, and that you would agree, is absolutely critical, is taking some sort of action. And if you can take some of the right action that is actually going to make a difference, if you can do that, then that's the path to transforming your relationship, really is. So I want to give you at least one idea each episode that you can take away and really use and see a, a significant difference. Because this isn't just about talking about your problems. I, I'm, I hope I've got that message through by now. You know, we're not here to talk about problems. We're here to, to look for what's really going on and underneath in a particular situation and really create a solution from there. Okay, so that's something about the format and the structure of the podcast that we're going to be having. So now I want to come on to just an idea that you can take away, something you, you, an idea you can work with. And I want you to think about your own marriage, your own relationship. And I'm, you know, I'm assuming you're, you're in pain. Things aren't going well. Things might be going very, very wrong. Okay. But think, there must have been a time when things were going well. 
when things were great. And I'm presuming, for most people, it's when you were um, first getting into your relationship with your partner, when you were first falling in love with them. You know, and this is what happens, isn't it? We meet somebody, we're attracted to them, we start to find them fascinating on all, so all sorts of levels, we fall in love with them, and we, we want to develop a relationship with them because we're having so much fun and pleasure and enjoyment with that person. And we're learning new things with them, we're, de we're learning about ourselves often, that's one of the big benefits really of a, being in a relationship I believe is how much it gives you yourself and how much you can learn and develop yourself as a person. But you know all these exciting things hap are starting to happen when we're, we're new in a relationship, you know everything's novel and new we're, and we're putting a lot of energy usually aren't we into this relationship you know because it makes us feel so good being around this person. And, you know, and eventually things develop and we get to the stage where we have this knowingness. This is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. And that's when we commit through what we have, what we call marriage, usually. And we get married. And the whole reason we get married is that we expect, we have total optimism, optimism and total expectation that all of those wonderful feelings that we've had in the in the time we've known our partner up until then, they're not only going to stay there, but they're going to get better because we're actually going to be able to, we're, we're intending to build our life with them. It's not just about seeing them on special occasions or when we can fit it in. We're going to be building our life with them. And that means usually building a, fam building a family as well, building a home, as, you know, children, building our careers around. You know, our life is going to change dramatically, isn't it, when we're now living with a person and we're building a life with them. Okay, but, you know, I often say it's um, strange that so many people still get married when you look at the statistics of how likely you are to succeed. And I'm sure we're all, all aware that, you know, the incidence of divorce is around 50% for first marriages. And it's even higher for second and third marriages. But it doesn't stop us, don't stop it. It doesn't stop us, does it, from being optimistic when we enter into this marriage um, partnership, if you like, this commitment and agreement. It doesn't stop us from thinking, you know, we really are going to build a fantastic and amazing life with this person. But what happens then? <clears throat> well, after a while, you know, other pressures start to come in. You know, we have the children, we and, and we buy the house maybe, and we we're suddenly faced, or gradually faced actually, with more and more pressures on our life and on our relationship. And what tends to happen is, in an attempt to deal with all those things, the relationship tends to get pushed to the side. Now even if we don't intend this to happen, and we don't want it to happen, it inevitably, inevitably in most cases, nearly all cases, is just what happens. And you know, the funny thing about life is, isn't it, that you can, you know, we don't, we're not aware of how quickly time passes and how just little things build up and all of a sudden, five years, ten years down the track, even less in many cases, we wake up and we think, I'm just not attracted to that person anymore. We don't have anything in common. We're, you know, it's just boring. I'm just not interested. Well, they're not interested. And, you know, that's the tragedy of it, of it isn't it? And we think all of those dreams and aspirations, you know, where have they all gone? What's happened? So, obviously that's one of my main missions, is to help you realise what's happened. But and, to, and once you do realise that, you can turn things around. But here's something I want you to try um, with your partner that I think could make a big difference. And it's just a little thing. And that is, think back. I want you to think back to the early days of your relationship. And think about the little things that you used to do that you knew gave your partner pleasure and made them feel loved and appreciated. Just little things. I'm not talking about taking them on a, on a world cruise because chances are that wouldn't make them feel necessarily any more loved and appreciated than just little things, little gestures. So think about what you could do that you used to do that gave your partner feelings of love and appreciation from you that you're not doing anymore. Now that's something well we're thinking about. What did you used to do? What little things did you used to do that you know you made your partner feel good and you've just stopped doing them? Maybe you know you just just 
haven't got around to doing them for a while. You know, when I ask people this question sometimes, I get some amazing answers back, and people are actually shocked at themselves when they realize what the little things they've stopped doing. Here's one, just smiling at your partner or your spouse, or, or laughing with them, or telling a funny story. You know, when was the last time you did that? For many people, it's been a long time since they looked at their partner and actually smiled at, smiled at them, or got them to laugh by telling them a funny story, or shared a joke with them. So that's one example. The other thing is, you know, guys, when was the last time you opened the door for your wife? Little thing, but it, women appreciate that sort of thing so much, to use a generalization. But it's true, because you're showing consideration, and you're showing that you care about them. So think of one or two little things that you used to do, that you, that you no longer do, that you know that if you did, your partner would think, oh, they actually appreciate me, they notice me, and it makes me feel good. So here's a little exercise for, t for today, if you like, is to do that. Think of one or two things and go away and actually do them. And you don't need to do it in a big dramatic way, but just try it and just see. It doesn't matter where your relationship is, where your marriage is. Okay, your wife's walking out the door. Okay, accept that. Just look up and give her a smile. Not in a funny way, but just in a way that says, well, actually, I love you. So give that a try and see if you get a different sort of response, no matter where you are. Well, hey, there's obviously tons and tons of more things more that I would love to share with you, but we haven't got time in this episode. We'll have to wait for another one. But thanks so much for joining me. As I say, this is the very first episode, so they're only going to improve from here on in, I'm sure. But I'm really delighted and thrilled to have this opportunity to share this information with you. And... I don't know how you found me, but if you haven't already, and if you'd like to be kept up to date with these podcasts, make sure you subscribe to it. You can do that on our website, which is growinginloveforlife.com slash blog. <clears throat> and that's going to have all the information about the podcasts um, as they come along. Also, if you really are struggling, if things are really bad in your marriage right now, can I can I ask you and suggest to you, you go to my, our website, growinginloveforlife.com, and there you can download a free report that I've prepared on, the, on five key things you can do to save your marriage right now. And there are five things that, are re that you can do that are, could make a really big difference straight away. So I really encourage you to, to listen to that. It's an audio, and I think it could be of great help. There's also, as I said, a Sexist Marriage Cure book on Kindle. You might want to check that out as well. And of course, feel free to email me if you've got any questions or comments, because some of the things, the feedback that I get from people would be great to incorporate those ideas into some of the podcasts. So that's all for now. Thank you very much for joining me. I look forward to sharing more information with you next time. So bye for now.